I'm Megan Larson, and I'd usually be on campus right now at Ryerson University in Toronto, Canada, but instead, I'm in my bedroom an hour away. This is one of six shows we've created to talk about how the COVID-19 virus is affecting our generation. You can watch our shows on our YouTube channel, RTA Showcase, or on our Facebook page, Global Campus Studio Live. Like Megan and Caitlin, Alama and I are at home because of the virus shutdown. Yeah, but things are quite different in Taiwan, where everything's open and we have been going to school the whole semester, but more about that later. Here in Toronto, there are lots of rules that we've been living under for the past month. For example, we're not allowed to be in any group with more than five people. So no going to church or weddings or concerts. In fact, you can get a ticket of up to $100,000 for breaking the rules. Every day, our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, stands on the front steps of his house in our capital city, Ottawa. He tells Canadians about billions of dollars in support for the businesses that have been closed and for the people that have lost their jobs. Lots of people are out of work, and that money is meant to support them. And usually I'd have to fill out my tax return by the end of April, but now we are being given extra time for that and things like mortgage payments. Yeah, rules here are very strict. No going to the beach, mall, any social gathering, even a funeral. You're, not, you're only allowed to walk around your block and go out shopping. Uh, roads are closed and the police find anyone who breaks these rules. Every few days we get an announcement from our prime minister um, about new rules, the number of people infected and health guidelines scary for us to hear the number of, of people who got sick. But Ian and Simon, you said that everything is open in Taichung, the city where you live. I, for uh, and students go back to school and the adults go back to work, but there are some of rejection to follow, just like students need to wear a mask to enter the classroom and everything is getting better. to wear masks in Israel and we have to take our temperature whenever we go into a store and maintain a two meter distance. We have the same rule about keeping your distance. Masks are recommended but it's not enforced and no one's taking our temperatures. The most we do here is self-isolate and sanitize anything and everything. One thing that has been shut down in Taiwan is the big social events like the concerts or the sports games. Here too. We've paused all of our sports games. Hockey is hugely popular here and everyone's really upset about not getting to go to games. And for us, even our streets are pretty empty. Our biggest and busiest downtown intersection is completely deserted. And on top of that, public spaces, including playgrounds for kids are all closed and even have bright yellow police tape around the equipment to stop people from touching it. Same with us. It's a very weird situation to witness. Yeah, Tel Aviv is basically a ghost town, but it should be packed with tourists and beachgoers. The summer is just around the corner. Us too. Toronto has a huge pride parade and Caribbean festival called Caravana that brings in a ton of people and huge revenue for the city every summer. But these have both been shut down this year because of the virus. The streets are usually packed for these two, so we know how you feel over in Tel Aviv. It's really shocking. People in your country must be very depressed. I wouldn't like to be trapped at home. Yes, me too. I'm because it is such boring to stay in the home, just like in the during the pandemic. And but I think in Taiwan, our government did a good job. They they ensure they can take care of most of people's their health, their healthies. And for me, I hope the pandemic will will end soon in the future, so everything is back like before. I mentioned our prime minister earlier. Justin Trudeau, he and lots of other politicians have daily news conferences to reassure Canadians. We have lots of doctors talking about precautions and preventing the spread of COVID-19. Some see this as comforting as we get a sense of familiarity and are kept up to date on what Canada is doing to slow the spread. A lot of news is on our national TV network. And like most people in my generation, I'm not used to watching news on TV, but I am now. <laughs> Me too. Although most people in our generation swapped cable for Netflix, I'm lucky enough to see everything unfold in real time because I'm self-isolating with my parents. 
I also get a ton of updates from social media. Twitter not only shares Canadian news, but American news as well. Right. So I'm really active on Facebook and their news pages, mainly BBC News and Ynet, which is an Israeli news page. For us, there's something called the National Healthy Command Centers. They hold a press conference every day to report the pandemic situations. The content is about how many infect cases increase in one day. Yeah. Also, Taiwan Fact Check Center is another platform which we use to check the information about COVID-19 and the website check if the news is true or false for Taiwanese people. Okay, so there is so much information coming at us in these crazy days of uncertainty. It's easy to believe things you read and watch. To test your knowledge and ours, we've put together a quiz of true or false headlines about COVID-19. Oh my gosh, I love the intro. <laughs> That's our first statement. Okay, let's see, let's see. Additional, Additional evidence. evidence. The coronavirus could have been accidentally released by a Chinese lab. Okay, what do you guys mm. think, true or false? Oh, I think it's false. No false. way. I think it's the keyword true. is accidentally. True. Yeah, right? accidentally, mm. it's just... No, I've false. definitely heard this false. from the beginning, though. Simon think it's true, though. Yeah, Simon think it's true. positive. It's false. <laughs> let's see. It's false. What? Oh wait, it's no wait. No, that's the intro. (laughs) So it's true. Oh, 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 yes. Good team. For a second, I thought it said real, and I went, "What?" I know. I would have explained a lot of things. Okay. Oh yeah. Protests to end the lockdown happening now in Vancouver. Ooh, ooh, I know this one. I know this is happening, right? Oh, so I'm gonna do right. What would you do? Yeah, yeah. I think I saw too. About this. Like, there are a bunch of people who storm City Hall or something. Oh my God, with signs and everything, not social distancing at all. Yeah, that's what's they, happening in Israel now. It's crazy. Oh my gosh. Why do people do that? It, it, <laughs> the numbers are real. Nice. Yeah, real that's, that's what I saw. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's really I stupid. Know. It is. Oh, it's, it's true. True, yeah. yeah. What's the next one? Walmart Canada will close all stores starting next week, but you can get curbside pickup. Ooh, okay. I have Walmart um, in Canada too. I thought it was a U.S. store. I, hmm. no, I know we have it in Canada too. But I feel like Walmart sells essentials I too. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I think it's. Sure. Yeah. I know I that there's like a, a lot of stores around, so I feel like they're planning to stay open. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, food and stuff. You need that. No, yeah. that's false. I was torn because some stores do have that. They have curbside pickup where they load up your car. So I wasn't sure. (laughs) Yeah, no, but they say they sell toilet paper. You need that. Okay, Russia unleashed more than 500 lions on its streets to tell to trick people that are staying indoors during this pandemic. It's kind of funny. I want it to be. I want it (laughs) to be false. True, actually. Because it's, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Interesting. I put it it's like good as strategy, don't you think? It's like creative a bit. <laughs> it, it's creative, for, that's for sure. Very creative of him. They're not killing more people than you would the virus. No, they're not going to, I don't think they're going to go out of the house. It, no, but yeah. it's false. <laughs> so, <laughs> never mind. Also, I don't think Russians are afraid of lions. Honestly, I'd be afraid of Russians. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny okay. to Caitlin because she's Slovak. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a good history. <laughs> okay, I'm half Russian too. It's fine. <laughs> All right, so in Turk medicine, people who talk about coronavirus face arrest. I feel like that's true. Um, False. Who talk true. about it? Why do you talk about true. it? Why do you think it's true? Okay, so I don't. I don't think it's oh, true. Oh, who talked about it? Oh, wait, because the news would talk about it. Sorry, I had, I don't know. If this is true, <laughs> well, we'll see. Oh yeah. my God. What? Yes. Oh, it's true? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You need to spread the information so people know. No, I, the whole point is like to keep it on the down low and then when uh, hundreds of thousands maybe of people. Maybe the news is excluded or they're trying to get rid of the people. I don't know. All right. People in Italy have thrown their money from balconies onto the street since it doesn't have value during quarantine. Okay. That's false. I you think need to that's buy true. Groceries. False. People. <laughs> no I way. think that's true. That's a waste of money, man. Yeah. You <laughs> still need to buy too. food. Toilet paper. No, yeah, I don't think they have, like they they do they can do something with the money. So maybe they did something like. I don't yeah. Know. Well, <laughs> people are unemployed. They're Bonds? not going to do 
out the window. Well, I thought it was false. I thought it might be. <laughs> I was like, if you're at home, oh, and that's the end. Yay. Yeah. Pretty wow. good, guys. Yeah, we did really well. I think we only got one wrong. I think I got all of them right. I'm pretty like, okay. Caitlin, oh, wow, that was so Some really of funny. the news really surprised me. There's a lot of rumors around the outbreak of the virus, and some of them are true and some aren't. Um, every conspiracy is well detailed and may confuse PC theories, and we will share with you now. People die flu every year if they have vaccines or not. So I don't get, like, what's the big deal about it? I'm like 24, I'm super healthy, and I have nothing to fear about. So why do I have to be stuck at home like that? I don't know, it's really weird. I don't know why they shut us down. As you said, it's just the flu. What are they hiding from us? What don't we know about it? What if they're trying to change the world in some way and they don't want us to interrupt? Now, obviously, it's more than just a flu, right? Healthcare institutions collapse, people are losing their jobs, economy collapse, and it all started in a small city in China. Small city, big international airports. What a great way to spread the virus, right? In the wake of the coronavirus outbreak, which started in China and began spreading the world over, there have been some people who try to find out the true cause behind this worldwide pandemic. One of them was Dr. Thomas Cowan, who claimed that the virus was born not because of a person eating a bat, but due to the emergence of the new 5G cellular network, which is the successive generation of the previous 3G and 4G networks. Cowan claims that throughout history, every time a new military technology has appeared on Earth, it has been followed by a worldwide plague, pointing out several examples such as the spread of the radio waves around the world at the time of the Spanish flu in 1918, or the growth in number of satellites around Earth while the Hong Kong flu was coming about. The world is getting way too crowded, and the medicine is getting better as well. So basically people don't die as much as they used to. I think the world leaders came up with this solution, the coronavirus, to cut the edges so there will be enough room in the world for everybody. It is fun. It is fun to read about it, get a little paranoid, get excited about it. But the only reason we read and believe those stuff more than ever is because we have all this time in the world right now. We're at home, we have nothing to do, we read about it, we listen to it, we talk about it. But that's not been proven, those theories. What has been proven is all the deaths around the world. Thousands and thousands of people are dying. And that is happening right now. And believe me when I'm telling you, I don't want someone to drop out my cell tower right now. I won't, ha I won't be able to talk on my phone. That's not a good idea. Don't believe everything you read. The coronavirus is real. And the theories, eh. We'll see in the future. Coronavirus! Coronavirus! I wouldn't call it a conspiracy, but what was circulating in Canada at the very beginning was that COVID was just another flu that people our age can't get. We've come to learn that's completely not true. And as we learn more and more about the virus every day, we know what it truly is. But social media isn't just about real and fake news. Yeah, another use of social media and YouTube and some Taiwanese designer create a crowdfunding campaign in that result in the full page ad in the New York Times for Taiwan to raise money for COVID-19. And it raised nearly 7,000 US dollars and the money is used for medical equipment or resources. So that's one way social media is being used for good here in Taiwan. How is it for everyone else? Well, for us, nurses are trying to raise awareness about COVID-19 and urging people to stay home. They've taken to social media with that message through platforms like Instagram and TikTok. Others, including celebrities, are simply establishing fundraisers through YouTube to try to raise funds for food banks and relief funds for the unemployed. Lady Gaga just had a really cool worldwide fundraiser happen on the weekend on the 18th. It was so cool. It was so cool. <laughs> okay, so you're watching The New Normal, one of six shows produced by university students from around the world. This episode comes to you from here in Tel Aviv, Israel, and from our fellow friends in Toronto, Canada, and Taichung, Taiwan. You can watch our shows on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. And we've been talking about how COVID-19 is affecting our lives. 
Yeah, before we move on, I just want to mention something that is very important to me, and I know for a lot of people around the world, um, there's been a very positive effect on the environment uh, because there are so many factories that, that are, have shut down and there are, are far fewer cars on the road. So it's kind of happy news around all the bad news. Yeah, we've noticed a lot of smog clearing in the air and wildlife starting to come back, which I think is pretty great. Um, another huge change in all of our lives has been education. In Canada, all schools are closed down for the rest of the semester. All of us have been attending classes online and it's exam time now at Canadian universities. So here's a look at what the experience has been like from our classmate in Toronto, Rachel Lee. Hi, I'm Rachel and this is how we're doing school and quarantine in Toronto. So this is how we're doing classes now since the quarantine started. This is my professor, Marion. Hi. <laughs> These are my classmates. We're having a small meeting about a segment we're producing through Zoom. Some profs upload their lectures online for us to watch. Just take notes however we want. We can access these on the school website. We also take our final exams through our class website, D2L, right there in quizzes, but I don't have any exams, thank God. So it's empty. Ryerson has also implemented pass-fail options for classes for students who don't want this pandemic to affect their GPA. We also do our group projects through Google Docs. As you can see, two people are online right now, so that's how we collaborate. And that's how class is being done in Toronto. Okay, looks like things have changed a lot for you guys, Sophie and Ilan. Do you know when we will go back to your campus in Tel Aviv? Um, we started our second semester only a month ago, uh, and since then everything is online. Uh, and we don't really know when we will come back to a regular schedule. Yeah, I relate to that. I'm in my final year and was supposed to graduate in June. The graduation ceremony is a big deal with all of our families coming, and there's even a guy playing bagpipes. <laughs> And now it's been postponed all the way until October. Luckily, we'll still get our certificates on time, but it's kind of a bummer that we have to wait for graduation. Yeah, I know we're lucky here that so many things have remained open. But as you can see in the picture, we still have some restrictions, like the people in the photo need to wear the masks on the street. Yeah, as you can see. Also, life is similar to the way it was before, at least. I feel panic, like most of people. I still have no idea when the panic will end and that it's dreadful. But I feel positive. I had a chance to think about what is the most important things in my life, to cherish the moment with my family and friends. And I really appreciate all of the healthy care workers. Without their efforts, we couldn't go through this hard time. All of care workers are our heroes. Yeah, COVID-19 changed my daily life. I was living in the UK, studying for a master's degree, and, but I had to come back to Taiwan because of COVID-19. I really don't know what will happen in the next few months. I still I hope I can go back to finish my courses, but as you can see, Taiwan is a safer circumstance here right now. Uh, for me, I just started my second semester, as I told, and everything is learned on, online. Uh, we can't go out, go out of the house if you don't have an essential reason, like grocery shopping or going to the doctor. So it's a very weird situation. Life is very hard. My dad is 71 years old, and because he's at greater risk of complications, I hardly ever see him anymore. And college has been very hard, too, since all of our courses, which are mostly practical, are online. And I haven't seen any of my friends in a really long time, and I just hope this ends soon. I can imagine how hard that is, Sophie. Because my grandparents are at risk, I can't visit them either when all I want to do is just give them a hug. But strangely enough, I've been able to connect with family a lot more. My life in Toronto was so busy that I didn't have much time to spend with my family. But now I'm out of the city, staying with my parents, and I've been isolated here ever since. I call my grandparents more often, and I talk to them from a distance when they drive by. I'm terrified because of the pandemic, but it, at least we're going through it together, even from a two meter distance or a phone call. I find some comfort knowing that. I know what you mean, Megan. 
I've had weekly group calls with my extended family to chat and play board games like Bananagrams. Quite a few of my family members, including myself, are immunosuppressed. So it's good to see that everybody is staying careful and healthy. I'm looking forward to the day that I finally get to see them all in person and give them the biggest hug. And hopefully that day is soon. Thank you for joining us and for hearing about our experiences in Israel, Taiwan, and Canada. We're doing several shows with students from many different countries. You can watch them on our YouTube and Facebook. From our home to yours, stay safe. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>